right. All right. How's everything going, One Hope? It is another great Sunday, and I am gr really excited about uh, being here and being able to, to share with you uh, God's Word, but not from uh, Virginia today. I am nowhere near Virginia. I'm actually in uh, Hale, Michigan. I'm at uh, my parents' uh, cabin way, way, way north, and uh, I'm pretty excited about being able to spend time with my family, but most importantly, uh, I'm excited about spending time with my church family as well. And so here we are today, um, coming live to you from uh, a total different place in the world, but it is awesome to still be able to come live with you and be able to talk to you about God's Word and just be able to come with you and just... Uh, begin to continue to grow in, in his word as we always do each week. And so I just want to be able to first and foremost um, hope um, that you guys have had a great week. Hope that everything has gone well for you. Hope that you are um, are staying strong um, each and every day of your lives and, and, and not just staying strong, but staying strong in Christ, um, most importantly. Um, I, I want to continue to encourage you guys to uh, to message us at any time if you need any uh, prayer requests or if you just want to talk. Um, uh, we don't claim to know everything about everything, but we have a little life experience and we always are here to try to help wherever we can. So um, feel free to always uh, message us at any time. Um, give us a call if you want to. Our number is always on the page um, and we will continue to uh, do whatever we can to to be of assistance, um, as Amanda uh, and I have adopted the phrase, how can we help? Um, that is that is our, our new phrase, our new thing, how can we help? And uh, we just want to help. So uh, you just always know that we are always here for you, and uh, we're always are going to uh, be ready to, to, to pray with you and pray for you if there's anything you ever need. And we're always going to be here to, to not just to, to help you, but to continue to help each other. Like, you, believe it or not, you guys, um, you guys are, are no different than we are, and we're we're growing with you. So um, we don't see ourselves any different than anybody else, and we always want that to be that way. So um, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, the message last week with uh, my mother, uh, Joyce Ackerman. She did an amazing, amazing job on uh, talking about um, uh, the armor, full armor of God. And um, and I hope you got something out of that. I know I did. Um, but we're going to finish up this series of, that we had started a few weeks ago um, called Bringing Out the Best. Um uh, first week we had talked about uh, just embracing um, our our children's uniqueness and embracing the people that were around their uniqueness to help to bring out the people's the best in people bring out who they are really meant to be um, in Christ and uh, and so we we talked about bringing out their uniqueness and uh, and how that God made them different in many different ways so that they can do different things and uh, and, and how we are needed to focus on who they are and not trying to compare them to who someone else is and trying to get them to be better than who God made them to be. Um, the second week, if you weren't a part of that, uh, we talked about conforming, uh, talked about um, uh, not trying to be like someone else, uh, essentially. Uh, God made you a certain way. He made you to carry your weight, to carry your load, to, to, to live the life that you were created to live, not to carry someone else's load, to carry someone else's weight, trying to be like someone else. And so it is so important that we uh, embrace uh, who we are in Christ and not try to be who someone else is because that's not who he made us to be. Um, We, we talked a, a lot about um, uh, comparing and, and, and how that kind of hinders people and kind of keeps people uh, wanting to be like someone else because whenever you compare someone uh, to another person, they're looking at them and saying, well, now my, 
my special things about me are not that special because that person seems to be better than me in those areas. And then they tend to want to be more like that person because of being compared. And so we, we, we've talked a lot about all those things. I don't want to get into it too much into all that. Um, if you were, weren't able to be a part of those messages, you can always go back and check them out. Um, they're always posted on online on Facebook, and uh, we will continue to do so. Um, but we're going to get right into uh, our message today. Before we do that, I want to say a prayer, and then we will get started. All right, here we go. Lord, we just thank you for all that you are. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you for allowing us to be here today, Lord. We thank you for, for keeping us standing, Lord through the trials and tribulations that we have gone through. We thank you for keeping us standing through whatever we may be going through right now, Lord. Um, we just ask you to continue to show us who we are in you, Lord, that we may stand strong, that we may move forward in everything that we do because you are leading us and guiding us and you are giving us the ability to do so. We just love you, Lord, and we give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. All right. So, we talked about all those things these past few weeks, and I just noticed, I apologize, I just noticed that I did not take my iPad so that it won't go to sleep on me. I told you almost every week I, I tend to forget this, uh, and here I go again forgetting to do this. So I'm getting ready to put that so it doesn't go to sleep, and we can get started. <laughs> all right, so um, today we're going to be talking about showing uh, people and our children, their value, their value. This is the the final point that I want to talk about to help bring out the best in our children and bring out the best in the people that we are around every day of our lives. Um, you know, it is crazy how the world is great in devaluing who we are. They're, they're always in through the media and through uh, just people in general, uh, they're always talking about how we're not good enough. Uh, you, you're, you're, you're not pretty enough. You're not smart enough. You're not skinny enough. You're not fast enough. You're not strong enough. You, and there's all these things that they tend to, to focus on and saying, these are the reasons why you can't do this, or these are the reasons why you're not the at this level or at that level or at this place in life or at that place in life. And, and so we find ourselves listening to these things and, and, and it's crazy how this works because the, the, the world is so focused on the negative and they're so focused on devaluing who we are and taking away the, the special qualities that God has put inside of us that they, they have a tendency to take a positive thing and they can turn it into a negative thing. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've heard people talk about how they've gone into an interview and said, oh, you are overqualified for this job. And people are not able to get jobs, job positions, because they know too much or they have too many degrees or they are uh, too much, have too much experience. And, and, and this is the world that we live in. They literally can take something that is so positive, so encouraging to know that, you know, someone put in the time to learn their job to that extent. And, and they take that and say, that's a bad thing. And that's what we find a lot in this world through, through everything we do in life. It is all about devaluing who we are and saying we're not good enough. We're not worth enough we or, or we're we're too good to to have what we're looking for and and it's it's crazy how that works um it gets to the point where we doubt um who we are as in being someone worth anything uh, we feel insufficient um and and we feel devalued and we feel uh like we are not worth much of anything after the media and after this, the, the people around us, this world, they, they have gotten to us over so many years. And so uh, it, we, we find ourselves looking to people for a perspective of our worth and our value. Um, but I, but the, the problem is, is that this world's value, their perspective on, our, on value is flawed. It is completely flawed. And 
we find ourselves being disappointed when we are looking to people around us for uh, a sense of value and as far as who what we are worth and what we what we how important we are to this world and so we find ourselves struggling in this area because of how people are and and how this world is um we're going to start off with uh uh scriptures in matthew i want to talk i want to show us what god thinks about our value and and what how god's perspective on our value looks like what it looks like versus what people's value looks like uh people's perspective on our value looks like um and i want to kind of talk about that so in matthew we're going to go to matthew chapter 10 verses 29 through 31 matthew chapter 10 verse 29 through 31 all right I'm going to let you get a second to get there, um, and then we will start on reading. Um, it is so important that we understand that the real perspective that matters is God's perspective. And when we can get to that point and understand that God's perspective of us is what what we need to be concerned with, we, we will probably find ourselves seeing more worth and more value in who we are each and every day. Um, and so it says in Matthew chapter 10, verses 29 to 31, it says, Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside your father's care. Now, before we go any further on that, let's just think about this for a second. He's saying that two sparrows, two are worth one penny. That means one sparrow is worth a half a cent. I'm going to tell you right now, that's not much of anything. Uh, most of us can see a penny on the ground and we probably won't even pick it up. Now me, I'm a cheapskate, so I'm, I'm going to pick it up, but most people wouldn't pick it up. And, and that's just the reality. Uh, one cent doesn't, it's not worth a whole lot. It's not worth almost anything um, for, for most of us. And so uh, it, it, God is saying here that he's saying that two sparrows sold are sold for one penny, and yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside the Father's care. In other words, he still, even though they are worth very little, he still knows their every move. He still knows when they live, when they die, how much they breathe. He knows everything about the sparrow. And they're only worth a half a cent each. Half a cent. We can't even put that in a, in a sense of value because the lowest we can go is one cent. That's crazy. But even at that worth, at that value, he still knows their every move. He still knows their, their every action and their, 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 their life and their death. He, he knows all of that. He keeps track of all of those things. And so it continues on and it says, and even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. So if God is values a sparrow, which is only worth a half a cent, and he keeps track of everything they do. They live, they breathe, they, their, their actions, their movements, everything about them he knows in detail. If he keeps track of them that and that, that much value, with that much value, then how much are we worth to God? We have to be worth so much <laughs> for, his, uh, for him to put that much value in something that's worth nothing. So we can know that God is cares for us more than we can ever imagine. If he cares for the sparrow worth a half a cent, then he has to care for our lives 100 times more than the sparrow. He says, he says, don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Just one of us is worth more than many sparrows. So it is so important that we understand the true value that God places on our lives. It is so important that we understand uh, that there's a reason why God has placed us here. And it's not just for the sake of being able to create somebody, but because there is a reason, a point, a purpose. So we must understand that um, our worth 
in God's eyes is 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 beyond our understanding. The, and and so we have to understand this as well. This is not just talking about Christians. This is talking about Christians, non-Christians, those who believe, those who don't believe. See, the thing is, is that God has a purpose for each and every one of our lives. And that's the first, first uh, point that I want to make. The first thing that gives us value is the fact that God has created us for a purpose. Each and every one of us have a purpose. Now, may, not not everybody's going to find their purpose within themselves and, and through Christ because they may not find Christ. And that is just the reality. But that doesn't change the fact that God created each and every one of us with a purpose in life. That means that we have a reason for being here. That means that we have a value, uh, a sense of importance about us because there are things that God has created, uh, created us to do specifically throughout our lifetime. So the first thing is purpose. That's the first thing that gives us value. The first thing that makes us value is the fact that we have a purpose in this world. God created, and we talked a lot of, uh, about this in the very uh, first uh, first session, but God created each and every one of us specifically to do specifically specific things because he created us specifically in a certain way. He created you exactly the way he created you, and he broke the mold after he did it. No one is ever going to be exactly like you. No one's ever going to be exactly like me. And that means that we were created to do specific things that no one else is going to be able to do because we are going to be a person who is set up and built in a certain way and placed on this earth in a certain place for certain people and for certain jobs and for certain uh, things to get done on this earth to give God glory. And so we have a value because no one else is going to be able to do exactly what we do. No one, because we are specifically made for certain things. So that is the first thing that gives us purpose. We, we must understand the, the value and purpose. When there is, there is, say there's a farmer who is farming some type of vegetable or some type of new fruit that nobody else is able to, to, to produce. And he's he is growing a whole lot of this crop, whatever it is, it doesn't even matter. It's some new invention that he, he's come up with and no one else is able to do it. You know how valuable that is? You know how much money he would be worth when he is selling this top of the line new vegetable to every company out there? Because no one else has exactly what he has. No one else is able to do exactly what he is doing. And so because of that, he has a lot of value. His What he does is very valuable and it's worth a lot. And so just like the farmer, we are no different. God created us, each and every one of us. And he made it specifically a certain way so that no one else can be can duplicate who we are and can duplicate the exact way that we do things. They just can't. And so that is the beauty of who we are and the value that we have. And so number two, the next point that I want to make is that makes us valuable. The next thing that shows us our worth is the fact that we were created. We were created specifically the way that we are. God created you. He created you exactly the way you are. He created me exactly the way I am. And that is the reality. The fact that God created you for a reason gives you value. So the thing is, is that you were created this for this way with your flaws, with your strengths, with your weaknesses, with everything about you, the way you look, the way you act, the way you think, everything about you was created by God. And that, that is something that we have to take value in because God made you on purpose. 
He made you exactly the way he made you on purpose. He didn't make any mistakes when he created you. He made you the way you are created on purpose. Psalms 139, 13 through 16 says, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You, Your work works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my uniformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. In other words, God was creating you in your mother's womb and he was specifically designing you a certain way. He already knew the things that he was going to need you to do. It says that your the days, all of the days were ordained for me before before the book was even came to be. It, 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 was, it, it was already written before you were even born. God had already designed you a specific way for specific things. And that right there makes you valuable. When God created you, he saw the full potential that you had in you through him. He saw your worth. The world can't see what your true worth is because they didn't create you from the inside out. They didn't design you the way that you are. So they don't know the full details of who you really are and how you can affect this world in a major way because God understands that he created you that way for a reason. So here's an example of what I'm trying to tell you here. So if I created a picture, if I painted a picture and Picasso created the same exact picture. We all know who Picasso is. If we both painted the exact same picture, the ex identically, nothing different about those pictures, it would clearly be that his painting would be worth more than mine. It's because of who he is that makes his painting worth more than mine. So. The creator of that painting is the reason why that painting is so important. That is the reason why that painting is so important. And believe it or not, you were created by the God of this universe, the most important being ever to, to exist. And you were created by him. The beginning, the end, the end, the alpha, the omega, the, the God, God who who created the heavens and the earth, the God who uh, made what exists today to be what it is today. You were created by him. You were important enough for him to take time out of his day to create you, you specifically. I was important enough for him to create me specifically. It is because of the creator that makes us valuable. It makes us valuable. Just like that painting that Picasso painted, it's only way more valuable than mine because of who created it. And I'm not saying that my my painting wouldn't, you know, you know, make a little little money, you know what I'm saying? But but it definitely is not gonna be as valuable as if it was made by Picasso. And so each and every one of us are so valuable because of who created us the God of the universe. Third, here's my third point. The next thing that makes us valuable, the make, next thing that makes us worth in, as much as we are worth is the fact that Jesus died on the cross. That Jesus decided to give his life for you. He paid the ultimate price so that you, you could exist on this earth, that you could live on this earth, that you could complete the task that he has created you to complete, that you would be able to do whatever it is that he is calling you to do, that he has created you to do. He died for that. Each and every one of us specifically, he died for those reasons. 
grasp the concept. There is not a person out here that would see that another person is worth that much to say, I'm going to die for every single person in this world because they're that important. There's not a person in this world that would do that. It, you know, you'll, you'll hear about, you know, you know, parents saying, I would die for my kids. And that's great. But, but for someone to say, I will die for the entire world. I will die for every single person that exists in this world. Not, not just die for every person, but die for every person, even those who won't even accept me. I'm still dying for them because I love them that much, because they are worth that much to me. That is true value. The fact that Jesus died on the cross, he paid the ultimate price, is why you are worth as much as you are worth. How do we determine how much something is worth? It's really simple. You want to turn, find out how much something is worth? Find out how much someone will pay for it. That's how much something is worth. That is the exact way of figuring out how much something is worth. For example, if I had a Michael Jordan rookie card right now, if I really wanted to find out how much money that would be worth, and I'm sure it would be worth a lot, all I would have to do is go to different people who buy these kind of cards, and I will ask them how much they're willing to pay for it. And when I find that 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 maximum number that people say this is the highest number that you're going to find so if someone's willing to pay for it, but then that is how much it's worth. If somebody is willing to pay thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars for a, a basketball card that just sits on your shelf or wherever you have it in a case, the fact, and that, that to them is, is a lot of value. Think about how much you're worth when you think about the fact that God paid his life for you. He didn't give a, a, a certain amount of money to, to, to pay for you. He gave everything he had for you. His entire life, his entire being, he sacrificed everything he could for you which makes you way more valuable than any rookie card or any basketball or baseball card or anything, out, any object out in this world that could ever be put a value onto, you could ever put value to. You are worth so much. And if you want to know how much you are worth, take a look at the cross. Just take a look at the cross because Jesus paid the ultimate price. Nothing is worth more than his life, than, 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 Everything that he gave on the cross, nothing is worth more than that. So you are so valuable. And the only way we're going to understand it is we have to grasp this concept of how much that really means, how much that's, that, how much we are really worth when it comes to what that means when we say he gave his entire life for us. Each individual person he died for because he knew that that was the only way you were going to be able to complete the task, the, the very important task that he, he was going to create you to do. That is why you are so valuable. All right. And then the first, sorry, the fourth uh, point um, that I want to make on why you are valuable is simply this. God's spirit lives in you. God's spirit lives in you. In 1 Corinthians uh, 6, 19, it says, Do you not, not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. The fact that God is willing to put his spirit, the God of the universe, the God who created everything, the God who is all-powerful, all-knowing, is willing to take his spirit and put it inside of your body to trust you with his spirit. That has to be worth more than we can ever imagine. It has to be worth more than ever, we can ever imagine. And it, it says here, it says, it says that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. 
meaning that's where it dwells. It's the house that the spirit lives in. And it says, who is in you, whom you have received from God. You are not your own. In other words, let's think of it like this. If a company said, I'm going to sponsor this person to do what he's doing, I'm going to, for me to sponsor what he's doing, I'm going to put my logo on everything that he, he, he does. My logo, my name brand, my who I am is going to be posted everywhere he is so that everybody can see that I am the one. I am the one who is sponsoring this guy. I'm the one who is paying for this guy. And based on what I'm paying, you can see how much this is worth. And so that logo is like the Holy Spirit. Once we accepted God in our lives and we are living that godly life, God's spirit is inside of us and that is his logo. That is who he is. And everybody's going to see who is sponsoring us, who we are representing, who is, is backing us because he is on the inside of us, who is who is allowing us, who is giving us the abilities to do what we're doing. That right there shows them who, who is doing that. And because of who is doing those things, that shows us how much we are worth, what we're doing, how much that is worth, how much all of that is worth because of who is giving us the ability to do it. Who is sponsoring us? Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. The only reason why we are able to do what we're doing is because God himself is living inside of us. God himself has put his special logo on the inside of us. And, and we get to show the world who is, who is doing that, who is paying that price for us, who, who paid the price for us, and who is uh, giving us the ability to do what we, we do, which makes us so valuable because of his spirit that lives inside of us. Now, I, I, I had I like this this example. I had heard this the other day, and I think this is a great example. But if you took a house, two houses, identical houses, side by side, and you said, "Hey, Duane lived in this one, in this house, and then next door, George Washington used to live in that house." How much do you want to bet that George Washington's house, even though it's it's the same exact house, but the house that he lived in is going to be worth so much more than the house that I lived in. Why? Because of who lived in the house. Who lived in the house? And so when we look at ourselves and we say, who lives inside of us? That gives us so much worth, so much value, because it is God's spirit that lives inside of us. And there is nothing worth more than his spirit, than who he is. And if we have the opportunity to have God live inside of us, then there is no number that you can put on our lives. There is no, there is no value that is higher than, than the God of this universe. So he makes us very valuable because of who is inside of us. So God created you. The son died for you and the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. That is what makes you valuable. I'm going to say that again. God created you. The son died for you and the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. That is what makes you valuable. And if you can grasp the concept of those three, those three uh, points, that this is why we have so much value. You, you can do just about anything that you want because you are important. You are very important to God. And there is nothing that he won't do to make sure you're able to do the job that he created you to do. So I wanted to focus on what makes us valuable. But now let's kind of shift gears a little bit and let's talk about how do we show people their value? You know, the whole point of this series is about helping people bring out the best in them, helping people to become the best person that God, that they, that they were meant to be, that God had meant them to be. God created them 
uh, created you and me to be a this certain specific 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 person, and and we we may not even be where we need to be yet. We we're, we're still growing, and and we will constantly be growing and evolving. Uh, to become this person that God created us to be. Uh, but the potential that's inside of us is there. He, it, the, the creation is there. We just have to continue to grow into this creation that God has put inside of us. And so um, we want. I want to give a couple of points on um, how can we show people their true value. How can we show people their true value? It is so important that we are able to do this. How can we show our kids our true value, most importantly? But how can we show the people around us our true value? Um, I apologize if I have, uh, uh, if you cannot see me. Unfortunately, uh, I just was notified <laughs> that um, I have frozen. Um, I'm not sure. Okay. I'm back. Sorry about that, folks. I'm back. I apologize. The internet is not the best where I'm at, but uh, Amanda is being awesome, and she has let me know that we are good to go. I am no longer frozen. Thank you, sweetheart. You are awesome. I wouldn't be able to do this without you. <laughs> uh, so the world knows. There's no way I would be able to do what we're doing without my my sweet wife, and even though she is hundreds of miles away, she is still supporting me, and she is taking care of me. So uh, she just uh, notified me and let me know I am no longer frozen. <laughs> so um, again, thank you, my love. All right. And as, uh, as we continue here, um, the first point I want to make about showing how we can show people their value is this. Number one, you give them your undivided attention. You give people your undivided attention. When you give your, when you give someone your undivided attention, you you simply are not just paying attention to them and just saying, "Oh, I'm listening." No, you're giving. When you give people your undivided attention, you're giving them your time. Understand how that works. When you're giving people your undivided attention, you're giving them your time. And so you're saying, well, how am I, how does that happen? Well, it's simple. You know, what does it mean to really give someone your undivided attention? It doesn't mean that we, we are, we try to multitask. And, and I tell you, this is something the parents do a lot with the kids. It doesn't mean that we're going to sit here and be playing on our phone or trying to do uh, a work um, related stuff or trying to uh, watch some TV or something when our child is trying to talk to us. It means that we completely take that moment in time and give them our undivided attention. And what happens is we're not sharing that time at all. We're giving them that time. So they don't have to share that time when they're talking to you. That shows that they are important to you that shows what they're saying has some type of value when you are willing to give one of the most important things to them, not share it with them, but give it to them, all of it. That moment, they have your time. And the reason why your time is so important is because you can't get it back. You can't get it back. And so when you're willing to give something that important to someone else, it shows their value that you have for them. You, you, it shows the value you see in them because you don't just give your time away to anybody. I'm going to tell you right now, there are some people that I will not give my time, complete time to, because I know that whatever they're going to be talking about may be just nothing but negative, or it's going to be something that's, that is it's not going to be healthy for, for my spirit, for my life. And, and so they're not, I'm not going to be willing to give them my time all the time. I'm not going to be willing to do that. Uh, there's a point when I'm going to say enough is enough. And I, I, it's, it's important that I give my time to people who actually care about my time because my time is important. And if I'm giving my important time away, then that means you're important. And so that is the first step to showing people their value is by giving them your undivided attention. 
Um, and I'm going to tell you, this goes with not just with kids, but with grownups as well. I can tell you, I work with a bunch of them that they respond differently when you are willing to stop what you're doing and listen to what they have to say. Because then that says, it says, what I have to say is important to Dwayne. And <clears throat> that makes me feel important. And so that is so important that we must understand that even with adults, we must give them our undivided attention. <clears throat> Number two, verbal appreciation. We can show people by giving them our undivided attention all the time <clears throat> that they're valued, that they're important to us. But there's nothing better than you telling somebody how important they are to you. That is so important. Um, words are powerful. <clears throat> and people respond to words better than they respond um, to other things that you may want to do to try to make it easier to show their value. But <clears throat> I know sometimes it's, um, uh, it's difficult to uh, want to talk to people. Um, and, and do a like a one-on-one. -on -one. Sometimes I can feel uncomfortable. Uh, but uh, it's, it's really uh, important that we are willing to take the time to verbally talk to people and tell them how important they really are. Um, <clears throat> people just simply need to hear that they are important. They, they need to hear that they're valued, that they have some importance, that what they, uh, who they are, it means something to someone. They, they need that. So the biggest problem that we have today is we're missing people in our lives to affirm our value. That is one of the biggest people, biggest things we're missing today. In this generation uh, that we're we're in right now, uh, most generations are missing one of their parents. Uh, this is most kids are missing at least one of their parents. At least, a, like there is a huge percentage of kids that only have one parent in their life <clears throat> growing up. And um, God didn't create um, us to, to be able to give everything that we need to give to our children. Um, he didn't create us to do that all in one person. He didn't create the mother to be able to, to give all of that on our own. He created the, the man to, 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 to have a very valuable part in a child's life. And he created a woman to have a very valuable part in a child's life. And together they can give them the godly value that they need. And what we find is, and it's not just in kids, um, even though these kids are growing up and they're still feeling the way they feel because they're, they're missing the affirmation of the, because so, so often the kids, they think, well, uh, if my mom or my dad is not in my life, then how important was I to them? How important was I to them? And that has nothing to do with, with, with marriages that uh, don't work out. Uh, I know many of marriages that, that didn't work out that parents are still in their children's lives and they're there to be able to affirm their value, to tell them how much they care about them and how much they're worth and how much they love them. And, and, and that is what is needed for for kids as they grow up but also as adults we 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 find that there's so many people out there who don't have um a close friend who does who doesn't have someone in their life that is able to say or show that they are important and um, it may be because uh of how they look or how they act and and maybe people have pushed them away because of the type of personality they are or, or the type of things they, they, they like or don't like or their perspectives or, or, or whatever it may be. And they find themselves alone and they find themselves without anybody to give them any affirmation of value whatsoever. And that hurts people, whether you're grown or you're a child, it hurts them because you will never reach your full potential ever <clears throat> reach your full potential in Christ unless you know how much you're worth, unless you know how important you are, unless you understand 
how important it was for God to take the time to create you, specifically the way you are. You'll never know. <clears throat> and I'm about to close here. Uh, I apologize. I, I probably should have brought my drink. I didn't bring my drink, and so my throat is a little dry. Um, but uh, <clears throat> I think we'll be okay about the close. But um, it's very important. We need each other. Uh, for people to see our true value, we need one another. It is so important that we we have people in our lives so that we can see our true value because we, as people, never ever are able to see our true value unless we base it off of something, some outside entity, something. And <clears throat> without people, it's very difficult to do that. <clears throat> it's very difficult to do that. Um, if people are going to want to be the best person they can be, they're going to need to know that they're unique, that they were created for a purpose, that they are valued, and that they don't need to be anything but what God created them to be. Because all of these things came from the Creator. And if we can grasp the fact that our uniqueness, our purpose, and our value all came from the Creator, <clears throat> then that should be what we need to, to encourage us to be able to be the person that we were called to be. I sure hope that you guys are, have got a good uh, opportunity to, to grasp the concept of what it really means to be important to really mean what it really means to be who you were created to be to what it means to 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 reach for your full potential that God created inside of you so that you can live the life that you were called to live that you were created to live I hope you see that and I hope you have saw that in this series uh, this has been an awesome series for me. Um, I have learned a lot and I doing my studies and um, I've actually have listened to a lot of different uh, pastors and preachings on on different topics of this stuff and um, it has brought me to a new realization <laughs> of what it really means to be valued and what it really means to be the best person that I can be and to help people be the best person that they can be. Amanda and I we, uh, we thrive on trying to help people be that, that, that the best person that they can be in Christ. That is our goal every day, everywhere we go. We're constantly trying to do that. Um, and this has given me um, so, some new things to kind of chew on to help me be better at that um, each and every day. Um, ultimately, bringing out the best in people is going to allow this world to see the best in Christ. And, 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 and that is happens because when we bring out the best in people, we're showing them who they can be and who they will be if they choose to be in Christ as they continue to grow in him. And so that is the ultimate goal, showing the world how great God is through showing the world how great each and every per, uh, one of us are because of who God is. <laughs> Let us pray. Lord, we just thank you. We love you for all that you are. Lord, we thank you for, for showing us our worth each and every day of our lives in your word. We thank you, Lord, for giving us such worth, Lord, through dying on the cross and creating us individually the way that you are, that, that we are. And we thank you, Lord, for allowing us to not just be cookie cutter people and, and be identical and just the same, but be individuals that have a purpose in our lives. And we thank you for showing us that purpose every day and, and giving us a reason to continue to strive to be the best person that we can possibly be and to help others be the best people that they can be as well in you and through you, Lord. We just love you, Lord, for all that you are and all that you're doing. And we ask you to continue to be in uh, in our lives and continue to be in our walk with you, Lord, and continue to, to show us and reveal to us your truth, Lord, and your ways, Lord, that we can continue to grow in you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, One Hope. Uh, I am so glad that we were able to, to do this still, uh, even with... 
uh, the technical difficulties, um, but we got through it. And uh, uh, I'm going to ask that you continue to share uh, these messages, continue to um, like our pages, our page, and and to uh, ask, uh, let other people know about who we are and about One Hope Church, so that they can uh, check us out and they can like our page as well. The more that we get people uh, liking the page. Um, not just the video, but the page, the, the more that we are going to be able to do with it. Um, and so that's really the goal. Um, honestly, um, numbers is not really uh, an importance to me or Amanda. We, we're here to do God's will. We're here to be obedient to what God is calling us to do. And regardless of how many numbers, that doesn't really matter. But what we want to do is be able to create an environment that is is. The, the best environment that we can possibly create and and be able to connect with you as much as we possibly can. And the way to do that is for us to be able to uh, uh, continue to get our page out there and continue to get uh, the message being shared um, so that people can see what we're doing. Um, so we love you, One Hope, uh, as always, and we always will. Uh, I'm so glad that uh, uh, you got to check this out for for today, and we got to get into God's Word as always. Um, have a blessed week, and we will be getting back with you uh, later on. We love you. Bye-bye.